Welcome back to Melbourne, Australia. Happy Halloween. I'm Scott Jagal coming to you this time from outside the Southern Cross Railway Station, where tomorrow thousands of colorfully dressed spectators will be headed via train to Flemington Racecourse for the Melbourne Cup. Tomorrow is actually a public holiday in the state of Victoria, so hardly anything will be open. Everyone will stop what they're doing at 3 p.m. local time to watch the race. As with our big racing events in the States, the Kentucky Derby, for example, the Breeders' Cup, there are always compelling storylines heading into those races. And the Melbourne Cup, of course, is no different. It has become an international spectacle. And this year, that is clearly on display when you look at the storylines. So I'll go through a couple of those, and then I'll get a couple of expert opinions on who might win the race, give my own, and we'll catch some moments from the uh, Melbourne Cup parade. So one of the compelling stories is Godolphin Blue. Sheikh Mohammed has five of the 24 horses in the field. He has never won the Melbourne Cup. Godolphin has never won the Kentucky Derby either. They're really trying this year, and they have probably the two favorites. One of them is Hartnell, who raced a week ago Saturday in the Cox Plate, finishing second to Winks, who no one was beating on that day. Uh, he's in good form. A lot of people liked his chances to win this. The other one is Oceanographer, who, believe it or not, just ran on Saturday, two days ago. And he won and qualified to be in the field, and he looks a danger as well with a, a really nasty turn of foot in the stretch. Today at a press conference downtown where hundreds of people from the public attended, not just the media, John O'Shea, the trainer of Hartnell, and John Ferguson, the CEO of Godolphin, talked about what it would mean to bring the Melbourne Cup home. To even think that you could win it is beyond belief. So, I mean, if we were to win it, I wouldn't know how I'm going to feel, mate. So, uh, you know, I come from a small town in North Queensland. To even have a runner is a, is frightening, let alone even give consideration of winning it. All I care about is that His Highness Sheikh Mohammed, who has put so much into the world of horse racing and, and has committed uh, so much time, energy and finance into creating this global team, I personally and all the team would just love to do it for him. As a contrast to the international story of Godolphin, the locals here are talking about Jamaica. Now she won the Caulfield Cup recently and looked very good doing it, but the reason everyone's talking about her is because she is the only Australian bred horse in the Melbourne Cup. That's an important factor and surely uh, the people of Australia will be going for her and she's one of the top chances anyway. I mentioned previously uh, her name comes from the middle name of Serena Williams, the tennis star. There's another story here with an American twist that the Australian media has really gone for. It's a bittersweet story. Uh, the name of the horse is Heartbreak City, an appropriate name because the owner of the horse died last year of cancer, but his friends rallied to maintain ownership and keep him with the same trainer, and now they're here at the Melbourne Cup. And to say the least, these guys are the life of the party. There's some talk they might drink the town of Melbourne dry, why? Because they're Irish pub owners in New York City. They're, they're from Ireland and they came over a few years ago and built a chain of Irish pubs in New York. And now they're here having the greatest times of their lives uh, with this horse, Heartbreak City. Uh, just to give you a taste of these guys, after their victory in a Group 1 race in August, uh, I believe this interview might have broken the internet. Listen, we're over New York, the whole office. We're over there. Years. If you're doing something, you do it 110%. Whether you're drinking, going out, going to work, everything's 110. Drink. Can I come and have a drink with you later? By Jesus, <laughs> later? Today, tonight, tomorrow, every day. And Aiden is still in good form here, as you'll see from this clip. Four or five months ago, we were below, up to our neck in, I won't say, the world is going to say mud. I'm going to use mud in Tipperary trying to win a maiden hurdle, which we duly won. Uh, beat the great Aiden, or Aiden O'Brien's son, Joseph, and uh, we're going to come along tomorrow and we're going to beat his father. <laughs> <laughs> the horse he's talking about is Bondi Beach, trained by Aiden O'Brien. He's one of the excellent chances from Europe in this year's Melbourne Cup. Now let's see what the experts have to say. I talked with Ron Duffesey, a former jockey and now a presenter with Sky Racing, and Glenn Munsey, who's with tab.com.au, tab of course being a primary tote provider here in Australia, about how they see the race unfolding. Good often have been trying to win this race for so many years now, and I think finally they're working out. It's taken them, they're a bit, been a bit slow learning, how, you know, that you've got to probably run, give a horse a lead up run, and, and um, also they've, they've bought up 
other horses for John O'Shea, you know, like Hartnell, he's been purchased to come to Australia. To it's taken a while to get him acclimatised and get him right. Look, I think they can Cornell the race. Uh, I'm a Hartnell fan. Um, I know his two two mile runs in Australia have been, you know, a, a little bit common, but he is a different horse this preparation he's settling better he used to be an excitable sort of a horse but he's turned into a a man he's turned from a boy to a man now oceanographer if he can cope with that three runs in 13 days i think his run on saturday was outstanding the way he uh, savaged the line so i i would say Godolphin hold the, a leading hand in this year's cup. I'm quite keen on a horse called Almandon. I think he's one of the forgotten horses. He's won his last two. He's won the Harry White and the Bart Cummings. So if anyone's got any credibility to uh, get tied up with the Melbourne Cup, there's two gentlemen there that have won, you know, a hatful of Melbourne Cups between them. But I think a lot of people have forgotten. This horse had around about 18 months off. Now, in 2014, he actually beat Protectionist before Protectionist came to Australia and won the Melbourne Cup. So he's got some very, very good form over there. His first sort of campaign here was wasn't great, but he's really stepped up his last two wins here, and I, and I think he's got a tremendous chance. Karen McAvoy, he's a Melbourne Cup winning jockey. He's a jockey in tremendous form at the moment. Lloyd Williams involved with Al Mandon and, uh, you know, another person like that. No one's owned more Melbourne Cup winners than Lloyd Williams, and he spent a vast amount of money. And he, that's the one race he loves to win every year. But, you know, I think he'll be very, very hard to beat. All right, the experts have weighed in. Now I'm going to give you a couple of roughies, long shots that I like in the Melbourne Cup. Starting with Heartbreak City, the horse I already mentioned, owned by the Irish pub guys from New York City. It's a great story, but he's also a really good horse. And he, although he drew an outside post position, he's got one of the top jockeys in the world right now, Joe Morera, who's coming over from Hong Kong. They call him the magic man. He might be able to work some magic with that horse. Another long shot is Big Orange, who will probably be on the lead throughout the early running of the race, but he's won two Goodwood Cups at two miles, the distance of the Melbourne Cup, so he's a big threat. They may have him to catch in the stretch. And then there's Wicklow Brave. A lot of buzz around this horse since he's come to Australia. Uh, he won the Irish St. Ledger this year, a Group 1 race. He's trained by Willie Mullins, who's a, a sneaky good trainer, and he's ridden by Frankie DeTori. So watch out for Wicklow Brave. That's going to be my pick for this edition of the Melbourne Cup. Who do you like? You can bet on the Melbourne Cup through an ADW and access information. I believe I told you about skyracingworld.com, a new website that is supposed to connect Americans with racing in Australia, give you handicapping analysis and race replays. So check out skyracingworld.com. The race goes off at about midnight Tuesday morning on the East Coast, and then on the West Coast, that's 9 p.m. Pacific. So just keep in mind when the race is going off. That's going to do it for Melbourne, Australia for now. Enjoy the Melbourne Cup. I'll leave you with a few scenes of the Melbourne Cup Parade, which really does prove why this is the race that stops the nation.